Good evening and great games at your table. This is Jonathan Alvin with Nikos RPG. And this is the Nikos Gnome News. Ah, I didn't put it over on my primary channel. There we go. These are the stories and tales of encounter potentials and realities in the world of Nikos. We cover two to three nations per episode and bring you all the news that is news fit to print. Nine news nuggets you need to know from each of the iterational locations. And tonight we are going to be focusing on a city that uh, sometimes gets a lot of attention and sometimes gets a little. In this case, we are talking about El Sidar or Eldrasar. The nation is collectively known as Eldrasar, but the city of El Sidar is at its core and center. So we are going to be talking about that city first, then we're going to move over to Florin, and then uh, southward to Gilder. And while Gilder doesn't have a, a city on the map, nonetheless, we will talk about the region and its capital is High Point. So we will get to that as we go along. If you'd like the channel and want to get more information, feel free to follow this broadcast here on Twitch. And we also have a channel over on YouTube at Nikos RPG. So hope to see you there. As uh, has been my case recently, I need to mention that my speech pattern is somewhat modified by a condition called Bell's Palsy. And for the last couple of weeks, I haven't been able to broadcast at all. So the fact that I'm back and on the air uh, is a blessing. And I would thank you for any prayers that might have come my way. And we will uh, just continue to provide information for you about the world of Nikos and what's going on. Let's get started, shall we? So we are going to head right over to El Drasar. And El Drasar is known as the hub of the realms. Its location in the virtual center of the drawn out map means that it's a natural crossroads as indicated by their sigil and it is the arguably the most uh, efficient market on the planet so the wagon wheel suggestive of the amount of commerce that passes through it so our stories today include the fact that dueling has once again returned to vogue and that uh, might seem like a uh, interesting uh, change in, in a fantasy world because dueling you would think would be pretty classically there. Well, in this case, it's actually referring to the city of Vogue, which is in the northern reaches of what is Eldrasar. So uh, that is that location is not yet placed on the map because no group has gotten there or engaged with it. But once somebody has an idea of where it is, we'll place it on the map. But just realize that the city of Vogue is a former... Koramite enclave, and therefore they have one of the best legal systems to protect those who might use dueling as a process of resolving conflict. In the next, we also need to mention that the uh, Elder Sunny fleet has now uh, ex expanded its support to cover and protect air travel and has a new fleet of transport ships that it has uh, purchased that are going to be plying in the airways in the near future and protecting commerce and trade in the skies as well as on the surface of the ocean. In a separate story, uh, the Priest Kings Agreement has been ratified establishing the uh, Priest Kings Organization as the primary resource for all of the Vale Church uh, counseling processes. And so there, therefore there will be uh, an additional location built for the uh, Priest Kings uh, coordination centers as they have become to be known. Now, additionally, because of the fact that the air travel has uh, re resumed and has kind of expanded the number of sources that are able to provide nerfs to the local populace for consumption has caused the price of nerf to drop considerably. This is a 
rather positive change in the economics of Elder Sar, which had become somewhat of a perceived one percenter city and now will be able to embrace a larger population with the luxuries of quality meats and such from the nerf population. On a more dark front, perhaps in the western region of the country of Eldersfar, there have been several Grundum rituals that have been interrupted by protesters of uh, Eldrin nature who are upset with the undermining of the mountain structure by the continued excavation being done by the Grund, uh, in particular of the Grim. So this will be an ongoing story and we'll make sure we keep our eyes on it going forward. Uh, in a side note, there's also been a change in the fee structure of vendors, booths, and the various stands and uh, shacks that are being utilized in the bazaar area of the city. And this has uh, drawn considerable ire from the vendors and in particular has actually pushed some buttons on the various guilds. And due to the fact that these fee structures are associated with the current trade routes, caravan guilds are now offering trailblazer jobs for uh, organizations and teams to help discover new methodologies for transiting goods and services from one location to another. So if you have a penchant for uh, adventure and travel, once you consider uh, participating in that by uh, contacting your local caravan guild. Uh, in keeping with the new and expanding support of the airship fleet by uh, the nation itself, there is a new airship construction site just south of the city that has been developed and is uh, in the process of being constructed. This facility will uh, allow this, the, the con construction of two new airships theoretically rolling off of the uh, production lines within a couple of months of each other. So this will really step up air flight and reduce the potential injuries that travel might cause. And then finally, uh, this one is kind of an offshoot message and it's just uh, perhaps only of interest to those stargazers that are out there. The last 300 years has been rather interesting as there's been considerable conjecture about what these uh, uh, asters are known as, um, what they actually are and what they belong, what they might be. And so the study of the asters is consider considering is continuing and the uh, number of personnel that are seeing strange lights apparently uh, most common just before dawn and along the eastern regions of the kingdom in particular have been noting this so we'll keep you apprised of any changes that might occur and any additional information on these uh, mysterious lights. This is NICO's News Network, and this is the nine nugget news nuggets you need to know. And uh, we're going to be dropping back to our main channel. We are approaching our first commercial break, and I don't want to put a viewer in the position of having to catch or miss part of their commercial. So give me a second here while I verify where we are in the chronology. It appears we have a little bit more time. So we'll go ahead and, and uh, move on to the next section, which, of course, will be Florin. And the City of Swords, uh, one of the other, one of the three Middle Kingdoms, is in the news now because, oh, that's interesting. They also, oh, because the Vogue must be on the border between those. So Dueling has once again returned. Uh, in foreign as well. And 
more of perhaps more note the iron bauxite and bitumen mines have reopened uh, after the investigation of potential wrongdoing by several of the miners and diggers guilds and this is going to therefore help reduce the costs and prices and will give us perhaps a new perspective on how the city of swords might generate its revenue going forward as the cost of their materials will be going down and therefore potentially reducing the uh, cost of military arms and therefore increasing the potential for martial conflict. Uh, a cultural revolution of sorts is now starting to take course in the kingdom of foreign as the expansion of the religions of both Kord and Miri have somewhat lit flames since the uh, initial reports of there being odd lights in the West at sunset. So we are going to be pursuing this uh, information in the future. And if we get an additional uh, tales, we'll be sure to bring it to you. Now, there has been an increased pressure felt by the Bothrakin because this new revolution suggests, this new cultural revolution suggests that the Bothrakin might have been complicit with the Callisto and during the last iteration to a deeper level than we might have earlier surmised. And therefore, we're asking as a, uh, a public notice to please consider uh, carefully your terms when dealing with the Bothrakin because we have uh, historical notice that the um, kith and kin, if you will, of the Bothrans tend to be a little bit more emotional and potentially could be violent. Uh, this does, however, rec represent the 300th anniversary of the Marshall Academy's anniversary. And as a benefit, those who have access to them, the price of Marshall Academy uh, tracts and treatises is going to be at 50% off during the next a uh, few months uh, leading up to the beginning of the next semester, which will be somewhere around the first of the year. Now, the city of Orr, which is uh, far to the north, barely within the boundaries of Florin itself, uh, report a recent a dragon attack that terrified them and caused a large portion of the population to escape into the local Inandran forest uh, for safety. Uh, eyewitness accounts suggest that the uh, dragon was rogue and particularly seemed to be uh, very heavily injured in his uh, forelegs, but that is at this point only conjecture. With the increase of number of dragon attacks, there are several unions and guilds and even trade organizations that are offering adventurers and spelunkers new and exciting opportunities to enter and cleanse these facilities of uh, draconic uh, invaders. So if you have, again, a penchant for that kind of work, feel free to check into the government of Florin for an opportunity to be a, a part of one of the hunts. And uh, to a kind of a sad degree, it is once again reported that the statues of Iris, which stand at the foreground of the Rainbow Veils division of the Academy, have been marred by those rather despicable members of Mary's men who do not abide a differing opinion and have been showing themselves to be rather stiff-necked about their religious views. Uh, ironically, at the same time, this has been the largest swordsman class that has graduated from the Marshall Academy it, since its inception. And so there is a, uh, a renewed feeling that Florin might uh, once again rival Mantara in its production of uh, worthy combatants 
for civilian and mercenary military organizations. All righty. So we finally have a third kingdom, and we're going to directly just hop right over to that as we are almost 20 minutes into the podcast, and I want to get through with these before we reach the half-hour mark. We are now going to refer to Gilder, which is the bastion of breeders. And uh, outside of Neo Moria, or actually in this iteration, outside of Moria, this is the most prolific horse breeding nation on the planet. And uh, it seems that they too are supportive of the dueling in the, in the city of Vogue. Vogue is uniquely positioned between the three of them. In the north of uh, Foran, between Gilder and El- Eldrassar. So, now on the other hand, the ordering raids from the north have increased against Gilder. This has a great deal to do with the uh, predilection for the giants of the north to have a particular taste for horse flesh. And therefore, it's been of concern. Now, because of the need to remain healthy and expanding, the religions of Miri and of the Green Vale have uh, increased dramatically within the borders of Gilder. And uh, this has meant a shakeup in the constitution of the local culture as the rainbow veils are struggling and the particular individual veils are struggling in the light of this new onslaught. Um, due to the invasion and the attacks by the Ordnings, the land prices in the north are in free fall, so it is recommended if there are persons wishing to purchase land in the world of Nikos, you will want to look to the north and uh, you can pick up some fairly, fairly fertile lands uh, there are some dangers uh, in reference to those species that are nearby, but the uh, the knightly order of Medicians has dedicated itself to supporting the equestrian order, the horse lords of the Highlands, and in or in uh, protecting and supporting those new landholders. So this may be a positive thing overall, but right now the prices are really low. So consider those. Now the um, eyes of Cabal were excavated literally in the last couple of weeks. And the fact that they are on display in Red Bluff only gives credit to the local community who fought to bring back their ancestral icon image and reinstate it in City Square. So we will carry more information of that, including images and perhaps uh, um, eyewitness reports of the installation of the Eyes of Cabal again within Red Bluff. But uh, stay with us for that. Now, with with the uh, increased uh, problems with the ordering, there are several organizations that want to t- set up trade routes to move uh, their horse horse flesh out of the valley quickly and so cartographers and trailblazers are being sought by several of the large horse lord families in order to uh, help them find ways to expedite the travel and the transit of their uh, younglings to their potential buyers in the south. Now there is a very dark story on the horizon as uh, the Uh, Order of Veils has actually declared an accusation of simony against the regent. In his recent installment of his uh, second daughter to the the position of uh, uh, speaker in the House of Lords. So this will be interesting uh, in the future, and we'll be keeping track of this. If it does develop, it may be the first case of uh, noble marshal and uh, noble. Uh, pardon my French. Uh, noble 
conflict in the court system, which will perhaps lead to some of the best and most spectacular pay-per-view conflicts uh, ever recorded. And then finally, this story is just a slight uh, kind of an oddity. Apparently, the um, personnel in the Sun Valley have seen writers, uh, in particular, on what appear to be uh, wargs or direwolves uh, in the area of Sun Valley. This is uh, adjacent to the last location known of the Blinn, and it is it is conjectured that it may actually be the beginnings of a new a new Blinn incursion, and so we will again be following that story rather strenuously. Alrighty, so we are coming up on the end of the half hour. I want to thank you for participating in the show. And uh, if you have any questions, of course, you can leave those in the comments section or in the uh, chat if you're here on Twitch during the show. We're on every night at 11 p.m. And each show, each week we bring you, eight, I mean, each show is two to three ep, uh, stories from the world of Nikos keeping you up to date on what's going on in the campaigns and outside of the campaigns of the game world. So uh, thank you again for watching. I'm Jonathan Alvin. This has been Nikos RPG. The nine news nuggets you need to know from the Nikos Gnome News Network. <laughs>